Hey, I am parasitologist Martin Nilsson here at the Gluck Equine Research Center. Today, we're talking about parasite fecal egg counts. What are they good for? Why do we need to have them done? And what do they tell us? Okay, so let's think about it. What would be a reason for doing a parasite fecal egg count for my horse? Maybe it's to find out if my horse has worms. <coughs> I guess not, so why not? Well, let me tell you a secret. Your horse has worms all the time. No need to do testing to find out. I could have told you that for free. So yeah, it should not come as a surprise that your horse has worms. It's supposed to have them, and it's supposed to have them all the time, and it does have them all the time. So no, we're not doing the fecal egg counts to find out if your horse has worms. Okay, all right, what then? Well, maybe, maybe it is to find out how many worms your horse has, right? <coughs> no, well, it's not that one either. And why is that? Well, because egg counts do not tell us anything about how many worms your horse has. There is no correlation between egg counts and worm counts. High egg counts doesn't mean high worm burdens. And I'd like to illustrate that with some data we have here from the lab. Uh, over the course of about 60 years, my predecessors had been evaluating a lot of possible dewormers in horses, so testing for safety and efficacy. And in all of these horses, they determined how many worms they had, and they also did egg counts. So we had a wonderful opportunity to compare the numbers. So, so we had about 300 horses in a database. We took the horses and divided them into three groups, just based on their worm counts. So these are strongyle, small strongyle worm counts, right? So we had a high worm count group, we had a moderate worm count group, and then we had a, a low worm count group. So let's look at the numbers here. Here's, here's the table. So in the high group, we see we have about 300,000 worms on average in this group. Uh, the range goes from about 150,000 worms to 1.4 million worms. Hey, no, that's, that's not outrageous at all. This is actually, these are pretty normal numbers. Uh, some of these horses were quite young. So yes, they do tend to have hundreds of thousands of strong jowls, and it is normal. But nonetheless, this is a high worm burden group. Okay, the moderate worm burden group, about a third of the high. So we're looking at 100,000 worms on average. We're looking at a range that goes from about 60,000 to 150,000 worms. And then the small worm count group is, again, one third of the moderate group. So now we're looking at 33,000 worms on average and a range going from 3,000 to about 60,000. Okay, so three clearly different groups in terms of how many worms they had. Okay, let's look at the Strongjaw fecal egg count. So mean fecal egg count for the high worm burden group was 1,310 eggs per gram. Okay, it's a fairly high egg count. I wouldn't say like really high. It's, it's, it's high, but not like outrageously high, but all right, it's high. Okay, we were also looking at the 95% confidence interval. That's the CI there. Um, that's a statistical measure for how, for the range in which or between which 95% uh, of all the data points lie. So if uh, the 95% confidence intervals are overlapping between groups, it means that there's really no statistical difference. So we're gonna have a, we're gonna keep an eye on those. Okay, moderate group, moderate worm burden group, what is the egg count? The mean egg count was 1,454. Okay, so it's higher. It's not supposed to be higher. These horses have less worms, right? <clears throat> Well, and it's only really numerically higher. Statistically, it's not higher because the confidence intervals are overlapping. Okay, let's go to the low worm burden group and look at the egg count. It is 1,172 eggs per gram. Okay, slightly lower, still more than 1,000, and not statistically different from any of the other two mean egg counts. So in reality, the egg counts is the same between these three groups despite their vastly different worm numbers. So worm counts and egg counts do not correlate. 
Horses with high egg counts do not necessarily have more worms than horses with low egg counts. So no, we cannot use egg counts to find out if a horse has many worms or less worms, unfortunately. Okay, what can we use the egg counts for then? How about to find out if worms are affecting my horse's health? That might be it, right? No, it's not now on either. So let's have a look at the life cycle. If we look at the life cycle, remember we have parasitic stages here on the top. We have external stages, pastor stages at the bottom. These are the strongyle, small strongyle life cycle um, stages that we're looking at here. And in red, I have circled the adult parasites that are the ones that are making the eggs. You know, male meets female. Sweet music and romance arises and they produce cute little offspring which are the eggs that come out with the feces. All right, so we're detecting adult parasites. Adult parasites, in general, for the strong adult parasites, certainly do not really cause any harm, if uh, at all. Okay, so the, the, the really problematic stages, the stages that can cause disease, are the larvae, circled in red here, these larvae, they like to hang out in the walls of the intestines and insist, as, as we call it, so they like form little cysts. They hide inside of these cysts and they wait for better times and then they come out when they feel like it. When they do that, they leave lesions behind and if there's a lot of them that do this, then that can cause diarrhea. So that's where we see disease. These larvae do not make any eggs. So egg counts do not reflect uh, in a, any parasitic involvement in disease, or it, they also don't predict the risk of disease, uh, of parasitic disease in your horse. So it wasn't that one either. So you may be scratching your head now. Uh, well, you may even go, that's what I've always said. It counts or crap. And technically, we are determining the egg counts in the crap. So in a way, correct, but no, they're not crap. They're actually really useful and really important. So why? What are we using them for? First of all, drug resistance, ladies and gentlemen. There is so much drug resistance out there that you have to do this. It's really irresponsible to not check if you horse has resistant worms. And if you haven't, there's a very high chance that this is actually going on, that your horse is actually harboring worms that are totally resistant to the dewormers that you're shoving into it over and over and over again. It's a waste of money, waste of product, waste of chemicals, waste of medicine, right? Let's look at this table here. So these, these are the global findings of drug resistance in the small strong jaws, cyathostomans, the ascarids, and then at the bottom we have the large strong jaws where we have the blood worm and some of the more dangerous parasites, if you will. Okay, there's just a lot of resistance going on, right? And actually, in the small strong jaws, we have resistance to everything, and it is getting worse by the day right now. And one thing to remember is once resistance has developed, it never goes away, right? So if we have something that doesn't work, then don't use it, right? There's no point in using a dewormer that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So find out what works and then go with that. That is really our recommendation. Look at ascarids. We also have a lot of resistance there. Uh, same picture, but kind of opposite of the small strong jaws. The only good news here is that we don't seem to find any resistance in the large strong jaws yet, at least. Blood worms, etc. So, so that's the only good news we have. You got to test. Egg counts are the perfectly right tool to do so. Egg, one egg count at the day of deworming, another one two weeks after. Compare. Your veterinarian will have the thresholds and will help you uh, interpret your, your results there. Okay, the other important thing is to find out if you have young horses, foals, weanlings, yearlings, um, even somewhat, somewhat older horses, they can have ascarid parasites, these buggers. And we wanna know if they have these buggers, the ascarids, or they just have the typical small strong jowls. Look at the size difference, by the way. Um, so why is that important? Well, I just showed you that table, right? So there's really no safe all worm dewormer that we can choose that will effectively treat both of these two, and horses may have them both at the same time. 
or they may have primarily aspirates, or they may have primarily stradiols. So we need to choose the most appropriate drug. drug. And uh, it's actually really easy to tell them apart on the fecal egg count. You look at these two pictures here, very, very, very different eggs. So anyone can tell them apart. And it's very important information to find out when the aspirates are there. They tend to be in the very young horses and the immune system kicks them out eventually. But you need to find out when that happens so you can choose a product that will effectively deworm these when needed, right? So yes, that's another reason for doing fecal egg counts is to find out which one do we have, ascrits or strongels. Last one is to find out which horses are the ones that are responsible for the infection pressure. We talk about the high shedders, the horse that tends to always have the higher count, and every time we check it, it is high again. And so we look at the herd and we're wondering, which one is it? Is it that one over there? Is it the other one? And is it, you know, is it the crappy looking one, the one that has a little bit of a dull hair coat, or is it the fatty fjord pony or the corner? We don't know. There's no way of predicting. We need to do the egg count. And then we can find out which horses are the 20% of horses that are shedding 80% of all the eggs onto the pasture. And then we can make sure that those horses get dewormed. Maybe they get dewormed a little bit more than the rest of the herd. The rest of the herd may just get by with maybe one or two treatments in a year, and then we can add a few additional treatments to those high shedding horses. So that's why, why we do these egg counts. So resistance checking to find out if we have ascorts or strongels to find the high shedders so we can tailor our parasite control program and only do worm where necessary. So egg counts are here to stay. Uh, embrace them, they do good things, we just need to interpret them correctly. So please share this video, like and comment, and, um, and maybe suggest future videos and we'll try and accommodate and make them. Thank you so much for your attention.